Radio USA's Profiles of Success is brought to you in part by the 365 Grand Club, Colorado Springs' only elite urban downtown club. Don't like having to park downtown? Don't like paying full price for great dining? Hate working out in crowded gyms? Use your 365 Grand Club card and forget all of that. Enjoy the benefits of downtown with ease and prestige. Get your club card today by visiting www365 365grandclub.com That's 365grandclub.com Go there today and join the club The 365 Grand Club And now let's join your hosts of Profiles of Success Chuck Bader and Jerry Evans Welcome to this week's episode of Profiles of Success. I'm your host, Chuck Bader, along with Jerry Evans. I didn't know this was an episode. It is, yes. <laughs> okay. I suddenly feel like we're in prime time on television, right? That's the way to feel. That's the way to visualize what we're doing here. That's yes. exactly right. Anyway, <laughs> we want to thank you all for joining us here on Profiles of Success. You can find us by going to our Facebook page at Success Radio USA or by going to our website at successradio.us. We would invite you to register with us there for free. Got that four-letter word there, Chuck? The big four-letter word. The big F word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Free. Big and F you word. will get a free, <laughs> thank you, the studio audience is once again applauding. Yes, And you will get a free ebook download as our gift to you. Now that you are one of those who take success seriously, notice how I changed the that wording in there. That is a big improvement over you, last week. You can subscribe to Success Radio <laughs> USA for only a few dollars a month and have total access to our show archives on demand and our success library of ebooks, which are also free to members. And members is less than a buck a week. Three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. Save yeah. that penny per month. <laughs> yeah. And what are you going to use with that extra penny? Well, you save it up over time to use the Dave Ramsey approach and invest it to uh, build your thousand um, dollar emergency fund. Yes, all the good stuff. Or maybe you can save it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Compounds. There we go. That's exactly right. And maybe you can also save it and, and get yourself some uh, some nuts and fruits and candies yes. and everything like that. Uh, Mountain Man uh, Nut and Fruit Company. I That'd think. be a good place uh, to go. Now, the reason I say all that is our guest is the owner of that. Uh, particular business, and he's also affiliated with several other different facets of society. It's <laughs> kind of amazing. Mr. Bob Lancey here is on, on the program with us on Profiles of Success, and Bob, we welcome you to the program. Yes, sir. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for the invite, guys. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Absolutely. The studio audience is even giving you a hand right now. <laughs> we need a hand or two. <laughs> yeah. Amen to that. Okay. <laughs> That wasn't all that funny, was it? <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm talking to this, yes. Uh, let's get into your own personal history. Um, uh, where are you originally from, and uh, and how you, how did you end up here in Colorado Springs, and, and all the things that you're involved with. You know, I know you did some military time and, and everything like that, so... The floor is yours. All right. Thanks, Jerry. I appreciate that. Uh, actually, I was born and raised in the uh, great state of Hawaii. And um, actually, believe it or not, I was raised on a dairy farm. Hmm. In Hawaii? In Hawaii. Uh, my dad owned a, a few dairy farms in Hawaii and then uh, lived there for a few years. And then my dad decided to sell it and move over to uh, the great state of California, San Jose, California. Do you know, do you know the way to San Jose? <laughs> <laughs> do you, no. you know we're going to have a singer here today? Well, they don't talk to you about out in dairy farms in Hawaii, so it's not actually cows; it's coconuts. It's coconut milk. So you have to squeeze those. Suckers, yeah, right. Man. That's Come the trick. On. That's the trick. <laughs> Absolutely, but, uh, much cleaner. Let's, yes, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, was a, it was a great life in Hawaii. But uh, we decided to go to California and uh, went to a school called William C. Overfeld. So, if there's any Overfeld graduates out there, uh, Rock on. Uh, hi, yeah. <laughs> home of the uh, Royals, I guess. And uh, so, in 1971, I decided to join the military and. Uh, uh, went off to uh, join the Air Force, and um, we just uh, had a great time and good career. And it started out as a canine drug dog handler, to be quite honest. And, really? Uh, yeah, we had a it was an interesting career, but. Um, a funny story. My my flight chief, when I was stationed in England, decided to uh, come on out to where I was posted and told me to put the dog in the in the car or the truck and left me out there to uh, guard the uh, insulation. Then I decided I needed to make a career change. Yeah. <laughs> so when you start protecting your dogs before the uh, the young airmen, I think it's time to make a change. Yeah. There you go. That's exactly right. Yeah. Now going back to Hawaii, though. So you grew up on a dairy farm. Your family owned that. 
Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. My dad did. Absolutely. So he so. sold it, and then that's when you moved to California? Is that I, what? Uh, that's correct. Yeah. And how old were you when he sold it? Uh, I was 12, uh, 13, uh, about seventh grade, or I believe it was. Yeah. So the cool part about that experience, and this is why we asked for the backgrounds, is, you know, did people come from a situation to where they were raised in a uh, blue-collar family, per se, working by the hour, or in more of a business environment? It sounds like you grew up in a business environment. Uh, I guess you can call it business. Uh, right. Yeah. Because he owned the farm. He was an entrepreneur, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he just... Uh my dad was one of those guys that just seemed to luck into a situation, and uh, we just uh, got into it. Now, did you work hard every day, or did you milk it? <laughs> <laughs> Is that room shot to see the finger there? The finger? Oh, yes. All right. Thank oh, you. Yes. Score. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Well, we actually worked hard. My One of my responsibilities was to make sure that the uh, – the, uh, the area where we stored our pigs was cleaned out before I went to school. Oh, boy. Yeah, so uh, it was that kind of, had to be fun. Kind of a smelly job, actually. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was my job before I went to it. My dad uh, gave us an allowance of a whopping uh, dollar a week. So that was, uh, that was a tough life for us. So did he teach you about the behind the scenes of how to run a business, or was it just kind of doing the work part of it? Uh, just the work part. Uh, okay. My dad had a, a manager as well to manage the farm, the dairy, and, and uh, we just we did a lot of labor. Okay. So, yeah. So it wasn't like you're in a family, uh, like, say, David Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, where you had a, uh, an entrepreneurial dad who was actually teaching you that as uh, Robert Kiyosaki uh, to teach you how to do that instead of uh, doing the W-2 route, working by the hour. Uh, you still were not privileged to learn the business side of things from him, it sounds like. No, I was too young, actually, okay. you know, being a... I don't you know, know about that. Yeah, 12, 13 years old, trying to... You know, make a dollar a week. That was pretty tough. Right. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, just to highlight that, and this is where one of the benefits of our show is compared to the other shows out there, is that we link <laughs> things up on this and show people how it works. So you talk about too young. Uh, there was a, a African-American child grew up in the south side of Chicago named Farrah Gray, who at nine years old started a business, and by 12 years old, millionaire. Office on Wall Street at age 14. So not too young. Mm-hmm. And that's what we want to point out to our listeners out there. You're not too young. You're not too old. You're not too this. You're not too that. It's all the same brain. You just learn how to harness that sucker, use that sucker, to get the results you're looking for. Well, Bob just waited a little bit longer to be to make his millions. Exactly know. right, but no, I just I have to address that. I can't let that go. No, I, know, young, I, know, you know? I know, I know. <laughs> Seventy years old, my, uh, Grandma Moses, not too old. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's true. and she started the forty year career at age seventy, one hundred and ten before she sold the big paintings. So, oh wow, yeah, yeah. yeah don't let okay. the little factors in there. Okay, <laughs> All right. okay. Keep them out. All right. So anyway, I joined the Air Force and. Uh, Went to a lot of places in uh, the state of Washington, went overseas in England. And basically in England, I just... uh we worked a lot. Of, we worked a lot of hours, and as a canine drug dog handler, but uh, I also played a little softball when I was there as well, okay. and uh, traveled all over Europe. And um, so that was a good opportunity for me to work in the sports business. And then, to be honest, that's where I started officiating uh, basketball, and uh, loved that particular sport, and uh, continued with that uh, throughout my career in the Air Force. And uh, I retired. Uh, actually, I came here in 1985. Um, Worked out with Air Force Space Command and uh, retired in 1991. And while my stay here in Colorado Springs, I was affiliated with a group of officials, uh, the Colorado Officials Association, and uh, did a lot of games with them. And I saw an opportunity to expand the business and we um, sort of was kind of stagnated a little bit, and I decided to form my own company called Rocky Mountain Sports Officials. Just after retiring? After retiring. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, we, so I've been in the sports business uh, as far as a manager or an owner since 1992, and you know we just celebrated our 26th year uh, being in business in Colorado Springs. So we've done really well. So there was, a, there was an opportunity that we – that we saw and we went after it and um it's been very successful for us as far as I know. Yeah. So let's go back to a little bit of the backstory. So you're uh, military, you retire. A lot of people would just kind of take it easy at that point. But now you're thinking about a business. So let's go to the transition from 85 to 92. Uh, when you're um, you know, working by the hour in the military, there's no entrepreneurial opportunities. Did you prepare to become a business owner when you're in the military? Or was that after you were uh, retired? Well, it's actually when I retired. Because okay. when I was in the military, you know, everything is, uh, is pretty much set for you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, and uh, you just do your job and then support the military and exactly our great country here. So um, you retired as a major, right? Yep, correct. And then when I um, 
When I decided to retire, I, I worked for I worked for some uh, defense uh, contractors and everything else. But so the, the sports business was basically a side business on my own. And actually, it was my uh, my wife Rita that encouraged me to go after some of these contracts. So just because you enjoyed sports and you thought, hey, I enjoy doing this, I like to do this, and why not make some money at it? Uh, absolutely, there was a great opportunity that we we saw, and we just wanted to do it. So you didn't have to get an MBA. You didn't have to have people you know that taught you about that. You just had a little desire and a little effort into it, and all of a sudden, you're off and running. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so well, that, that that's an interesting take on that, and, and we're going to delve more into that uh, as far as the officiating is concerned, but also... Uh, uh, we're all, as a sideline, we're also going to talk about uh, your other company, the Mountain Man uh, Nut and Fruit Company. Uh, we're going to get into that and how you got affiliated with that as well. So, okay, uh, all that's still to come. Exactly. And the key lesson before the break is like Bob talks about, it doesn't always have to be a well-thought-out plan. It doesn't have to be something you spend years of research doing. A lot of times people will, uh, uh, what they have what's called paralysis by analysis. They're trying to overthink it and overthink it and make sure it don't fail. You just got into it, and that's pretty cool. And it's been working for quite some many years now. It, it has been. Yes. Okay, and with that, so, uh, we're going to go ahead and take this time. Oh, yeah, yes, remember yes. your Don't pens and this. papers, that's right. These folks have a job to do out okay, here, man. Yes, you don't just right. sit around like Write down uh, all, of, all, the all, the, all the phone numbers, <laughs> and uh, make sure you take down the names and the phone numbers and the websites, and the websites. of our particular advertisers right Absolutely. here. Our sponsors, the folks that's that make right. all this stuff happen. On Profiles of Success, we'll be back. <laughs> How is a car like a computer? I don't know. How? If you don't do routine maintenance, they get gooped up and fail early. By performing routine maintenance, your system performance will be improved, keep it secure, and find issues while they were small. Well, Elk Creek Computers will perform routine maintenance on your computers for $99 per system. Call us at 719-576-4122 to schedule an appointment today. This week, my name is Harley Mitchell. Next week, I'm not sure yet. Maybe I'll use your name. You see, I'm a cyber criminal, and I steal information that defines who you are. Things like your driver's license number, your birth date, your home address, your office address, your social security number, your medical information, insurance cards, business licenses, and if I can get it, your birth certificate. If I can get one, I can get the rest. It's not personal. It's just business. Once I have your information, I bundle it with others and I sell it. Not just once, but over and over and over and over and over. Due to recent massive data breaches, your personal information is now available for cyber criminals like Harley to buy and sell to their underworld counterparts for profit. Bad people with bad intentions hiding behind your identity. Don't be fooled and lock down your financial financial life use the professionals that fortune 500 companies use id shield and legal shield it costs less and reaches further don't lock down your life call andrea wacker and get the right protection for the right problem andrea wacker is your lady of justice call now at 719-243-3174 that's 719-243-3174 Programming produced by and for the Internet Broadcasting Network can be found on TuneIn. Be sure to take us with you by using the TuneIn app on all your mobile devices. This is the IV Network. Welcome back to 
profiles of success. I'm your host, Chuck Bader, <laughs> stealing live from the movie of Melissa, one of my favorite lines. <laughs> well, well, okay. well, well, well. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> anyway, we're glad that everybody is joining us right here on Profiles of Success. Remember that you can find us by going to our Facebook page at Success Radio USA or by going to our website at successradio.us. I'd like to invite you to register with us there for free, and you will get a free ebook download as our gift to you. Now that you are one of those who take success Yay! seriously, hey, thank you very much. You can subscribe to Success Radio USA for only a few dollars a month and have total access to our show archives on demand and our success library of ebooks, which are also free to members. Absolutely. I like to point that out, you know? Well, yes. I mean, that's the whole benefit of this stuff is you've got to put the time into it. And for less than a buck a week, man, that's a pretty cheap investment. It really is. You know? I think it's a great idea. Exactly. All right. And one thing I wanted to point out about what Bob had talked about is that a lot of people are so hung up on over-preparing or right. feeling they're not ready for it. Uh, but in your case, you really, in the military, had no idea that you wanted to start a business. But one thing that colleges do nowadays is they'll give you credit for life experience. So when you think about being a major in the military, you have the leadership skills, the coordination skills, the organizational skills, and therefore you use what you have acquired naturally into a business that you can run successfully that you love doing. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Um, you know, the military prepares you for a lot oh, of things yeah. in life. Right. Yeah. So. Well, you're talking to three military veterans here, you yes. know, so, uh, <laughs> Navy and Marines and, of course, Air Force. Yep. All that's missing is the Army. I wonder I know, why. Right? In Fort, <laughs> military town, Fort Carson. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> so, uh, it, you guys talked about successes and everything else. I think it's uh, it's a matter of uh, you know opportunities given to you and just taking the opportunities. And you know a lot of guys prepare for their uh, life after the military, which is great. And but sometimes opportunities take you in different directions. And in my case, it has done that. And um, you know, with my love for the sports, uh, my sports world, and I've been involved in a lot of things, particularly in basketball. Uh, I'm the owner of Rocky Mountain Sports Officials. We've been in business since 1992. And in 1985, I joined a a group called the Colorado Springs Basketball Officials Association and uh, started out as just a brand new basketball official, although I've had a lot of experience officiating basketball. uh, We had to take this, go to study sessions and take this uh, test to be certified. And uh, as I experienced my Uh, my basketball career with this organization I've uh, been very fortunate to be in some leadership roles and uh, my most recent role has been as the basketball signer now really expand on that because that is uh, you know sometimes when we and I'm a basketball official just so everybody realizes that and uh you know, I get uh, games assigned to, to me by Bob and uh, by other assigners, but uh, it is a major, major undertaking. I don't think uh, people are even aware. Nice wordplay. How my, <laughs> what? <laughs> nice wordplay. Major undertaking. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Where's that, that ring finger? Where's now? that finger? Okay. We got to see the finger. Do- oh, we got to wave off. Oh okay. my uh, Figures. So but, okay. Uh, anyway, it really is a, uh, an unbelievable undertaking that that you have to work through. As far as so sometimes when you have all the games that are scheduled, how in the world do you do it? I don't know. <laughs> There's your safest answer. Yes. <laughs> now, it's a challenge. And, you know, it's, uh, our high school association, we have three uh, basketball signers, and we all work pretty well together and, you know, just to get uh, officials assigned to the games. You know, the, the Our goal is to make sure that we have the right officials in the right games and uh, that we help the student athletes uh, have a pleasant experience. And uh, in my take, it's also also have our officials have a have a real good experience when they officiate uh, any given year we've have about 2600 games to, to worry about almost uh, 7000 slots to fill so it's very uh, it's, a, it's a tough challenge but uh, we we make it happen and uh, we have a very good organization uh, for those who know us uh, we do a lot of good things so not just officiating uh, but we also do things like uh, officials versus cancer and, mm. and those things uh, there's a guy named Gary Montel he does a real great job as far as uh, organizing that and we have individuals like a Chad Dubbs uh, Katie Parker and you know the list goes on of guys that help us with that program but uh, going back to being a leader in the basketball world 
Uh, I not only uh, work with the CSBOA, but I'm on, I'm on the Colorado Board for Executive Board, and I also sit on the national level as well and as a, as a regional director. So my basketball career, I've been very fortunate being in the right place at the right time, and you know, I've been recognized for a few uh, things that I've done, and so that's helped me progress in the officiating world. So, and... I also have a company called Rocky Mountain Sports Officials. We do a lot of uh, recreation sports. I formed that company in 1992. Like I told you earlier, we're just celebrating our 26th anniversary. And uh, the driving force was that I saw a need to expand the business. The current company that I, the company that I was with did not want to expand their their business uh, uh, territories. So I decided to form my own company. And, um, you know, it was just a matter of just seeing an opportunity and just going with it and make it happen. So. Now we have what's called a teachable moment here and this is going to be huge foundationally huge because the the most important thing in life is your identity. People are going to make sure that they always do things within their identity. So now we go back to Bob's situation. So many people will not branch out and start their own business because they say I have no experience in that. Now when you're looking at starting a business, the more natural choice would have been based on your heritage to do a dairy farm. Mm-hmm. You, it's like hey, <laughs> yeah, I grew up really. in a dairy farm. I had the experience in the dairy farm. I'm an expert at dairy farm. Dad, you help me out with dairy farm but why didn't you do a dairy farm here comes the answer i know but why didn't you do a dairy farm uh, it was way to be honest it was way too much work and uh, <laughs> uh it's my military background that made me a, a, a you know either you're a leader or not and uh, you know when you're in the military that's what that's what takes you to become leaders and managers and those kind of things and now for the obvious question then get ready for the bing 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 the light bulb coming on why did you get into sports well, I played basketball and I played softball in the military, and I just love the sport. Love it! That's yeah. the word I'm looking for because he loves to do what he's doing. He's getting paid for it now. Boom! Right there. How do you start a business? Do what you love and get paid for it. Simple formula. End the show. Thanks for listening. <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> no, no, we got to keep going on. Okay? I know, but, but people miss that. It's We're like, just getting into the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they're looking so hard. It's like, do what you love. You'll be an expert at it. You'll be passionate at it. And when you do what you love, how many hours a day did you spend when you're first getting that thing started? Uh, quite a lot, probably. Yeah. Like 20, 26 hours a day. Day. Probably, yes. <laughs> Probably, yeah. But you enjoyed every second of it because it was not work. It's pursuing a passion. Absolutely. And I, I, tell, pe- I tell people as a, an assigner for uh, for, our, for Rocky Mountain Sports Officials or and for CSBOA, uh, you know, you, you've got to you got to have a passion for it, and you have yes. to. I love taking this puzzle together and, and, yes. and putting this puzzle together and putting the right people and, and making their experiences uh, very good. Now, of course, the officials once they get the games and everything, and they do the games and, and whatnot. Of course, they get paid for it and. What not, and, and as, as far as running the organization, this has to be something that you're not just doing as a volunteer basis. You have to be successful at it in order for this, the organization to continue to be successful, right? Uh, that's absolutely correct. We, um, you know, I was fortunate to be the uh, president of CSBOA and uh, an area director and the president, state president as well. But uh, again, it, uh, if you surround yourself with good people, you're going to be very successful. And that's, uh, that comes from the military, and people don't like to hear that often. But, uh, you know, I was a squadron commander for uh, a couple squadrons. And if you surround yourself with good people, you're going to be very successful. Not only that, but there are also other reports that say that you earn within, I think, like $2,000 per year of the people you hang out with most often. So that's another incentive. <laughs> you know? oh, yeah. But, you, but you're right, being around good people, just like we were talking about with uh, Jerry last week. No, Johnny Wilson. Johnny Wilson, right, yeah. last week. is that uh, So he's going to go bowling, never really done professional bowling, but he understands the neuroscience behind the fact that when he watches these people, he's picking all that stuff up. And so when you're around successful people, you're picking up all their habits and thoughts and philosophies. I knew a good friend of mine. Uh, he's always told me that uh, you should uh, watch very, watch successful people and see how they become very successful. And there is nothing wrong with copying their exactly. ethics and their and their methods. So, well, you go with the Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins, if he wanted to do what you're doing, he would have a and very in depth interview process. Why do you do this? What do you do this? What do you do? How do you you know go overcome the obstacles? So you're right. I mean, and people love to share that. Absolutely. You know, it's surprising because the the uh, assumption is if you haven't got in the business or wanted to be successful, you think, oh, they'll never tell me that. Oh, I can never talk to them, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Stop making the assumptions. There are so many people who are just, they're emailing me, hey, here's what you need. Here's what you need. People who have made it big love to share. They love to serve if they're the right kind of person. Right. And if they're the kind of person that'll hold back, it's like, then move on because you're going to find plenty of people who want to share and who want to help you improve your quality of life. And you're one of them. Yeah. Yeah. I've been blessed to have a lot of people in my life that has helped me through my career, not right. only in the military, but also in my uh 
my many endeavors in the civilian sector as well. So, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly right. And uh, but but as far as, as the basketball is concerned, and uh, of course you 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 assign football as well, right? Yeah, through Rocky and, Mountain Sports officials, and yeah. then also uh, soccer. And you said that you also just added another one, but uh, maybe you're not assigning that one, right? No, we actually got into ice hockey, but uh, hmm. we've got an organization that covers those games for us, and um, so it's all good. And because uh, you don't want to work 28 hours a day, right? Uh, not really. <laughs> I think I'm working 30 now, but that's, uh, yeah. it took 20 something years to get there, though. Yeah, really, that's Absolutely. for sure. Yeah, but uh, the organization Rocky Mountain Sports Officials, we've done really well in the community. We do a lot of good things, and um, we've given a lot of opportunity for a lot of people to, to make some in- income and. Uh, Boom. We do a lot of good things. So. Yeah, the, the side income is, is really wonderful. But I know that one of the things that uh, when you talk with people who do officiate, the main reason that they do it is because of their love of that particular uh, organization, or I should say that particular sport or endeavor. Absolutely. I think when people officiate, I, you know, obviously we don't make as much money as we would like to, but for the majority of the people that work either at the high school or the uh, recreational level, they do it because they thoroughly enjoy it and at the youth level they do it because they want to work around with kids as well so uh so i've been lucky enough to have people on my staff that uh, just thoroughly enjoy the game so okay there you have it chuck exactly right can't put it any more succinctly than that no and then it gets so simple you know people try to overcomplicate this just you love what you're doing you enjoy what you're doing you know and that's <laughs> that's what's going to make it really happen Absolutely. You know, and what are we going to have happen right now? What we're going to have happen right now is we're going to go back in time. We're going to go back to the 21st century when all we had were analog devices and analog paper thingies, and not computer electronic, no battery necessary, no Wi-Fi connection. But you're going to hear our sponsors. And they're going to tell you a phone number and they're going to tell you a website and they're going to tell you what they do. So when you need what they do, you write down the phone number website. You give them a call. Everybody's happy on Profiles of Success. We'll be right back. <laughs> It increases production and focus on the job. It alleviates sleepless and restless nights and fends off stress and tension headaches. No, it's not the latest energy drink or health supplement. It's Legal Shield. Get peace of mind every day, every night, now and forever. Legal Shield. Get it. To find out more about Legal Shield and how it can protect your family and your business, call Andrea at area code 719-243-3174. That's area code 719-243-3174. Legal Shield. Success Radio USA is always looking for ways to help you succeed. Whether it's offering a word of encouragement or sharing practical information that can give you the competitive edge. So you'll want to pay close attention to this. Our new sponsor, the 365 Grand Club, can give you the edge when conducting business in downtown Colorado Springs. You might want to entertain a potential client or just show appreciation to a loyal business partner. Either way, your new 365 Grand Club card is your passport to downtown Colorado Springs. Your club card gives you access to discounts, business perks, making new business connections, and the convenient private concierge service that makes getting around town hassle-free. Enjoy the benefits of downtown with ease and prestige. Get your club card today by visiting www.365grandclub.com. That's 365grandclub.com. Get yours this week and join the club, the 365 Grand Club. Click the Tune In Follow tab and have instant access to your favorite IB programming. IB is your internet broadcasting network. Hey, this is Megan, Cindy, and 
and Sammy. And we are the Success Radio USA Singers. Thank you for listening to Success Radio USA. Success Radio USA. Success Radio USA. I'm a success Go. singer as well. Yes, let, sir. Let the ladies sing, please. <laughs> Dang it. My I'm trying to get God. some part-time work here, man. Help a brother out. Come on. Well, <laughs> you're going to have to pay because you ain't getting the, All right, you so I'm not, not the singer guy. getting any money for that. I'm the talker you. guy. So take two with a little clip, right? Take two. Um, welcome back to Profiles of Success. I'm your host. Chuck Bader. Yes. Along and with. And I'm Jerry Evans. All righty. And we, I got to calm him down. <laughs> Impossible. Anyway, we want to thank you for joining us here on Profiles of Success. Remember, you can find us by going to our Facebook page at Success Radio USA or by going to our website at successradio.us. And we'd like to invite you to register with us there for free. And free. you will get a free book download as our gift to you. Free. Now that you are one of those who now, take success seriously, you can subscribe to Success Radio. USA for only a few dollars a month. Under a buck a week? Yeah, $3.99, all right. $3.99. And have total access to our show archives on demand and our success library of ebooks, which are also free to our members. Don't there you go. cost you nothing. Yeah, that's right. So now we're talking about business mindsets and mentalities, and some people think that, you know, it's either this business or that business, but there is a skill set. And then Steve Emke, uh, score mentor with Score, absolutely amazing guy. He's all, into all kinds of businesses. Point being is that it's almost like the operating system of a computer. You have Windows, but then you add Word and Excel and email and everything else to it. But once you have the basic operating system, it is not that hard to branch off to other businesses. So in addition to sports, Mr. Lancey has... So we own a company called Mountain Man Nut and Fruit Company. It's a franchise with our corporate office in Parker, Colorado. Hmm. And uh, the story behind this is that in, um, I was a project manager for an IT company and got... Uh, got laid off and uh, you know when you're a certain age uh, not many people would like to hire you because right. you're you're sort of overqualified and so I retired for a couple of years and uh, to be quite honest I didn't like being retired because I uh, played a lot of golf and did a lot of honeydews around the house and my golf game was really really good but uh I, you didn't like the honeydews? I didn't like the honeydews. <laughs> <laughs> so an opportunity uh, came uh, came open to uh, buy a franchise in the old Colorado City, which is a fantastic area. It's got a lot Beautiful. of great, great restaurants right. and great uh, merchants. And if you haven't been there, people should come down and visit with us. Yeah. But uh, Mountain Man Nut and Fruit Company has been in, uh, com- in formation for about um, since 1977. So I did a little background search on that particular company. I was pretty. Imp- I was really impressed with the ownership and uh, and the product. And when when I was offered the uh, franchise in Old Colorado City, we uh, we said, "Well, let's make a career change a little bit and let's expand our horizons." And so I bought it in November of 2014, and it's been a blessing ever since. We've uh, done really, really well. And um, again, if you ever want some nuts and fruits, come down and see us. And, uh, <laughs> well, it's good. Plenty of nut representation here on the program, by the way, <laughs> just with Chuck and I, I think, and our producer, Tim. Now, let's uh, talk about something that he expands upon that. So Jim Collins wrote a book, Good to Great, and he says that one thing that's important when you're in business is that you want to be doing well by doing good. So in your case, you're not only doing well business-wise, but you're doing good in the community. Talk a little bit about the Halloween program that you help out with on that. Yeah, we have a little program called Safe Treats, and what we do is we offer for uh, vendors, uh, merchants in the area, a discounted price on uh, candy so they can uh, issue out uh, during Halloween and everything else. You know, if you guys are familiar with uh, Safe Treats for Old Colorado City, it's uh, you can probably get between uh, four and 5,000 kids there. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a lot of candy, and we, we certainly give a lot of candy out as well. And it's a great thing for the community. Um, it's you know we do a, a lot of things uh, we we give a lot of gift baskets out to sponsors and uh, community uh, partnerships and those kind of things as well if you ever want to come down to the store and we certainly make a, a great gift basket if you want to give a special treat to somebody and as you pointed out Chuck uh, not only is this a, a successful business venture this is something where you're actually giving back to the community and I think that's really vitally important and that's one of the things we always like to stress on this program on Profiles of Success is not only the fact of you know where you somebody came from and then where they're 
at at this particular point in their life, but what are they doing to give back to where they got, or were able to achieve today? Um, in, in our case, you know, we 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 just we have a lot of people coming in for uh, donations and those kind of things, and, and the answer is that. I should be careful how you say this, but we never say no. You know, we mm. always help a lot of a lot of communities, a lot of activities, and those kind of things. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's listening, right? <laughs> so ninety two so far. Yeah. So okay. we're going to have a lot of people come into the store asking for gift baskets now. So uh, I'll probably have to retract on my statement. <laughs> but um, but we help a lot of people out, and uh, we're pretty proud of that as well. So here's the big next thing, right? So there's a thing called the fourth sector of the economy, which is uh, the benefit corporation, social impact, social enterprise, capital capitalism, whatever it is. But basically the model is, is that before companies 10, 20 years ago were all about the profit. Everything's about the profit, bottom line, help the shareholders. And people have found out over the years, it's just not making you that happy. So now what they've come up with is a way for businesses to use the profits to serve the community for the greater good. And it is funny how intrinsic and how universal that is. And one of the best business minds in America's warning business leaders. It's like, you need to get on board with this thing about using your assets and your resources to benefit the community you live in and the world we all share because there's something very intrinsic about it. It's not about making a profit. It's about feeling fulfilled. And you're doing that. Uh, absolutely. You know, we, again, everybody wants to make a little bit of money as well. Right, right. But, uh, we, you know, we can't forget where we come from. Exactly. And, uh, you know, we help out... We help out certain organizations to help them as well to progress and, and help their uh, their cause. And uh, as far as Mountain Man is concerned, we if you haven't been to our store at 2606 West Colorado, uh, suite number nine, uh, we're right behind uh, the, probably one of the better Greek restaurants, uh, Jake and Telly's. But come see us, and uh, we certainly like to uh, show you our store and, and uh, our product. We're pretty. We were really happy about that. So now, learning curve. All of a sudden, you're a military retired major, which is a great accomplishment. Then all of a sudden, you branch off. And you're doing sports. Now you're doing fruit and nuts. What was the learning curve going from sports to fruit and nuts? What what new expertise did you have to pick up, or connections did you make? Well, uh, I'll tell you. I have uh, when I bought the company, Mountain Man Nut and Fruit Company. I had zero years of experience in retail, which but, is what franchise people like, that's right? Exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't want you to know. They want you to know their system. <laughs> that's right. So you know, I'm just encouraging our listeners. You don't have to know what you're buying in a franchise. Absolutely. But I I think to be successful, I think if you just treat people with respect and um, and, and just when you see somebody walking in my store, they never leave without a smile on their face because Um, they're happy to walk in there. The the snacks that we offer and the product that we offer is uh, first class. And uh, people are always smiling when they walk in the store or walk out of the store. So, again, the key is in my businesses is that you treat people with respect and you just treat them very nicely. So. Exactly. It's all about the relationship. Dale Carnegie goes back to what? Win friends and influence people. Treat people nice, you know? <laughs> That's an easy philosophy. He used the example of a dog. Dogs don't judge. Dogs love everybody, you know? So kind of use that mentality. Just accept people. Serve people. Make them feel good. Yeah. And I think it's the... the the general consensus at Old Colorado City is that all the yeah. merchants. I mean, if you if you've been there, you'll know that all the merchants treat everyone very very well, and it, it goes from the restaurant owners to the retail owners. And we we have a really nice community, and I wish people would spend more time in Old Colorado City visiting us. Not just my business, you know, Mountain Man Nut and Fruit Company, but. Boy, just come on down and see the community. There's a lot of good things uh, happening. And I happen to sit on the uh, Old Colorado City Foundation Board. And I happen to be their treasurer. And, you know, I'm a big fan of the West Side. And, you know, if you haven't been there, you know, make it a destination. Come see us. You guys, uh, are, are you affiliated with Territory Days at all? Or Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it's pretty close, right? <laughs> yeah, it's right next door. It's right down the street. <laughs> but, no, Territory Territory Days is another great event as well, and uh, you know we have thousands of people visit with us. You know, a lot of vendors on the on the streets and everything else. It's a great event, and again, and if you haven't been there, you know you, you need to make that you know as I call it, uh, set the date and come see us. Uh, there's another event that's happening in Old Colorado City. It's called the West Fest. It's uh, it's an event that's happening in uh, Father's Day weekend, and uh, and a lot of vendors will be there uh, selling their food products and everything else. And so it'll be another thing to enjoy at the old Colorado City. 
So. Now, here's another good big part that we haven't really talked about is that a lot of people running into businesses, and we had Johnny Wilson last week, just lost his entire photography studio, but it sounds like you didn't have a whole, from what you told me, a whole lot of obstacles. It sounds like things went pretty much according to plan. Well, you know, when I first bought the business, uh, I bought it in November, and, and I worked with the, the owner, Teresa uh, Barber, Barbera, and she taught me how to become a really good retail owner, and uh, I, I'm blessed to have been acquainted with her for a little bit, and uh, she does a really fantastic job. But uh, in November, December, things looked really prosperous. I mean, I was pretty happy about it, but I think people have to understand that in January and February and March, uh, our business is pretty much shut down during that time frame, so it was a bit challenging as well. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's really true, actually, in a lot of businesses, because more often than not, uh, after the Christmas season, uh, that's when a lot of the companies will see a downturn in their overall business uh, uh, and, and their profit making. Absolutely. And I think you just have to, uh, you know, not get too excited a little bit, just kind of uh, weigh the benefits and then the challenges that you face. You know, one day you're going to make a $20 sale and the next day you're going to make a $200 sale. So it's just a matter of just being patient and uh, not getting really too excited about it. Just, uh, um, Just understand that that's part of retail and go from there. Take the mean average of everything. That's what you really have to do. Exactly. Yeah, you balance it out. yeah absolutely. Yeah. But also, like you said, one of the key factors in your franchise situation was you had a good franchise, somebody on site to help you out and really kind of prepare you for all this stuff. Absolutely. The uh, Mount Man Nut and Food Company has been in business in Old Colorado City for 20 years, and I've just owned the business for three and a half. So uh, the former owner, Teresa Barbero, she's had, she's had a great experience with that, and she's taught me uh, a lot of things of how to run the business, and uh, I've been very grateful for her as well. So because she probably failed early on with her uh, issues, she helped you avoid those. Absolutely. It's like, don't reinvent the wheel. <laughs> you know? It's like, yeah. find somebody and tag onto them. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So oh, what here we, we do go. right now? I've got Come it up on the window. Yes, yes, indeed. Okay. Uh, we want everybody to make sure that you take down the phone numbers and those websites of our great sponsors. And let's get it done right away I because we need to make sure that you contact these people and let them realize that they are proud to be sponsors of Profiles of Success. Darn right. Brina, how is a car like a computer? I don't know. How? If you don't do routine maintenance, they get gooped up and fail early. By performing routine maintenance, your system performance will be improved, keep it secure, and find issues while they were small. Well, Elk Creek Computers will perform routine maintenance on your computers for $99 per system. Call us at 719-576-4122 to schedule an appointment today. This week, my name is Harley Mitchell. Next week, I'm not sure yet. Maybe I'll use your name. You see, I'm a cyber criminal, and I steal information that defines who you are. Things like your driver's license number, your birth date, your home address, your office address, your social security number, your medical information, insurance cards, business licenses, and if I can get it, your birth certificate. If I can get one, I can get the rest. It's not personal. It's just business. Once I have your information, I bundle it with others and I sell it. Not just once, but over and over and over and over and over. Due to recent massive data breaches, your personal information is now available for cyber criminals like Harley to buy and sell to their underworld counterparts for profit. Bad people with bad intentions hiding behind your identity. Don't be fooled and lock down your financial 
financial life, use the professionals that Fortune 500 companies use, ID Shield and Legal Shield. It costs less and reaches further. Don't lock down your life. Call Andrea Wacker and get the right protection for the right problem. Andrea Wacker is your lady of justice. Call now at 719-243-3174. That's 719-243-3174. Programming produced by and for the Internet Broadcasting Network can be found on TuneIn. Be sure to take us with you by using the TuneIn app on all your mobile devices. This is the IV Network. Welcome back to Robots of Success. I'm your host, Chuck Bader, <laughs> stealing a line from the movie of Melissa, one of my favorite lines. <laughs> well, well, okay. well, well, well. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> anyway, we're glad that everybody is joining us right here on Profiles of Success. Remember that you can find us by going to our Facebook page at Success Radio USA or by going to our website at successradio.us. I'd like to invite you to register with us there for free, and you will get a free ebook download as our gift to you. Now that you are one of those who take success yay! seriously, yay! Thank you very much. <laughs> you can subscribe to Success Radio USA for only a few dollars a month and have total access to our show archives on demand and our success library of ebooks, which are also free to members. <laughs> See there? I, 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 I got to do a suck up right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But the goal is uh, with the Mountain Man Nut and Fruit Company is to keep the business and keep it in the family and um, right. like to keep it. Uh, and my wife would probably take control if something ever drastically happens to me. But uh, that's the legacy part of our business. And the same thing with the other business, Rocky Mountain Sports Officials. As long as we continue to run winning, win contracts, you know, we'll just t- take that business and have the family take care of it and go from there. Exactly. So, you know, we're not talking a million-dollar operation, but, you know... Those well, it's us, a major operation, though. I mean, just give us an idea of how many officials you have to be affiliated with. <laughs> well, we have in Rocky Mountain Sports Officials, we have about uh, almost uh, 450 officials that work wow. with us. So it's uh, quite a challenge, but uh, we've been very fortunate in that business as well. And uh, I, I think if you look at the Bob Lancey legacy... Uh, we've done really, really well. You know, there's been a lot of challenges, but uh, you know, overall, if you look at the big picture, you know, we've done really, really well in our business connections. So, and we're a great thing to do for your kids instead of having to throw them to the wolves, so to speak, in the working world per se. It's like now you have this family legacy, and, and it's going to continue on, and they're going to take pride in it. They're going to pass it on to their kids. You know, well, I hope so. <clears throat> uh, both my kids, uh, actually, all three of my kids are doing really, really well. Uh, I've got a son, Justin. He's a project manager for a construction company. And and my my son is an office manager for a dermatologist, and he does really well. He's uh, he's got a good head on his shoulders. Actually, all three kids are doing well. My daughter is a volleyball coach, and uh, she does really well too. So nice, yeah. Boy, <laughs> I, I don't know how you juggle all this to, to keep yourself sane. Well, a project manager is probably a key piece of that, I assume. Uh, pretty With much, yeah. Uh, my, yeah. Again, I rely on my military background right. as being an organizer and the project manager positions I've had throughout my career after the military. And keep in mind, you guys probably don't realize this, but uh, the Rocky Mountain sports officials and being the assigner for uh, the Colorado Springs Basketball Official Association is all, is all like a part-time job. It's not my full-time job. So, mm-hmm. you know, I've got this uh, little store, you know, Mountain Man Nut and Fruit Company to worry about as well. And um, like I told you before, we've uh, done a lot of things outside the store. We have a really nice uh, partnership with the Broadmoor Hotel. You guys heard hmm. of that hotel? Yeah, yeah well, I think so. Well, maybe, maybe, yeah. yeah. Stay there on occasion, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Motel 6 is not available. They hit the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Fiscally responsible president. <laughs> <laughs> but our partnership with the Broadmoor Hotel has been really, really good. We've... Uh, 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 we provide uh, chili lime pistachios of all the of all the nuts. You know? Wow! So if you ever go up there for a nice little drink, 
like uh, you'll get served some oh. chili, chili lime pistachios from right in the bar. In the bar. Oh so. yeah. So you do those? I do those. Those are good, man. I mean, it's like <laughs> wow. Those are good. It's amazing. I didn't know you did that. That's that's cool. Yes. Yeah, now think of Bob. Every time I'm having those nuts out there with my wine, that's pretty cool. <laughs> wow. I know that guy. <laughs> they're good, Jerry. If you haven't had them, it's I like, know the nut behind these nuts. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's really good. Wow. Yeah. So it's been uh, we've been it's been a great journey for us and uh, for the, my wife and I and. Um, uh, Red has done a great job in marketing our project uh, in our company as well. So she's uh, and she has a full time job as well. So, uh, but uh, we have a great partnership in our marriage as well, and it's important too. So. That is really important, yeah. Because if the family life is not good, that is so distracting on what you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. You know. So she understands your love and passion for all these particular <laughs> endeavors that you've been a part of, right? Well, <laughs> or does she understand? <laughs> there are certain limits and boundaries. <laughs> well, I've got to be real careful how I say this. <laughs> She's listening. I friended her. <laughs> See, I, I walked him into a corner now. Yes, yes. You, you did. Actually, okay, it's exciting. Boys. My Spice wife up. is very understanding. She, uh, she, she knows that I have a great passion for the sports officiating world uh, she doesn't quite understand why I don't sleep <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but no she she's a very understanding person she uh, she understands my passion and my love for the game and she certainly understands my love and passion for a mom and not free company because mm-hmm. we started this business with you know zero years of experience no retail background uh, we're, you know, you ever heard the, the statement "fear of the unknown"? Right, of course. Yeah, so we um, that was that fear of not being successful in, in something where we undertook, and you know, I, I think I'm very successful in the sports business, and I, I know what to do. But when you take the retail business as well, you know, it's it's the fear of uh, are you going to fail after investing all you know a few thousand dollars in the business. And are you going to fail? Or are you going to be succeed? But uh, I think those who know me very well that know that I'm not going to fail. So I'm, I'm, I'm driven by success. And again, surround yourself with good people. You're going to be very successful. That's my model. So. And those are a couple of keys to it. So number one, you had the attitude, I'm not going to fail mm-hmm. because you know the things that are in your control. I can work hard. I can learn and I can get around people who can teach me. Absolutely. <laughs> and I've been, I've been, again, like I told you guys, I've been blessed to have them. People mentor me in a, in a sports officiating world, and uh, I've had some great uh, mentors on, on how to become a good basketball official. And I think I've done I've done really well as far as officiating, but uh, I decided to step away from uh, being on the floor and just continue helping the organization as an assigner and, and giving people the opportunities. And uh, since Jerry's given me this opportunity to be on radio, I think I can give him a few more extra varsity games. <laughs> <laughs> it's all well, about work, Jerry. A little all right. Right, baby. I accomplished what I was out after right there. No, but no just, uh, we're kidding, guys. We're kidding. Yeah. Yeah. A book endorsement will we'll bring up, as you talked about, again, there's so many things connected, but there's a guy named Michael Gerber, like the Gerber baby food, for lack of a better term. But he has a series called The E-Myth, which is the entrepreneurial myth. And the foundation of the book is if you want to be successful in business, you have to discipline yourself to stop working in the business and start working on the business. So Bob did this, gets off the floor, takes a higher level position. Now you got 400 people who are employed partly because of what you've done. Right. So you have to, to really think beyond that all the time. It's just like, well, oh, I'm really good at sports and I'm just stay here forever. It's like, no, what's next? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, as we as we mature in the game, I think it's sometimes it's uh, it's a very difficult decision to step away from the from the game mm-hmm. as far as, uh, you know, officiating. But, you know, I, I, I just think it's a, uh, you know, it's a decision. That it's an individual decision that you have to step away and, and do something else. But let's not forget to give back to a something that you love. Uh, give back to an organization like Colorado Springs Basketball Officials Association. So, um, yeah, I, you know, it's a great group of people. We've done a lot of good things, like I said before. So, um, yeah. But, um, and sometimes you you lose track of the, the scope of, of what is involved with it. You know, yeah. it's amazing because of the fact that when you think about well over 400 officials just in the Rocky Mountain Sports Organization, uh, I'm, sometimes I'm, I'm kind of flabbergasted by the fact that you have to put this big puzzle, like you said, together and come up with the overall uh, I guess end result. Yeah, you know, like we talked earlier, there was a weekend we had 256 basketball games to worry about. And, <laughs> you know, I don't, I'm not sure if any other signer could uh, master that uh, that assignment process, but we did it, and uh, it's only because we have good people working with us, and um, so it's it's been good as well. Um, you know, we talk about. Um, 
future businesses. And now I'm looking at uh, maybe expanding Mountain Man Nut and Fruit Company, and hopefully we can make that work. But um, uh, we, I like to do that uh, one more, t- uh, at least within a couple of years, and expand the horizons and expand the exposure of Mountain Man because it's such a great product. And uh, boy, if you just haven't. Uh, sample our products in our store you should come by and, and take a look at that. He could be so. the next Amazon. Well, it, it, why not? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> but two things in this philosophy that stand out from my study of self development is number one, you've always got to keep growing. So that doesn't always take the traditional route of just being better at what you do, but to expanding your capabilities. So you go to sports, you go to nuts, you're efficient in sports, now you're taking on leadership roles, now you get the nut business, now it's just not one store, you're going to copy and paste the second store. So you're always growing and expanding and that's, it's a requirement of life. You're not growing, you're dying. Bottom line. Pretty much and you know you just got to be careful in your expansion as well and uh, not overtax yourself and then you, you got to make sure that your customer service is outstanding and uh, that's not only in the mountain man not a food company business but it's also in the sports business as well mm-hmm. you know you got to make sure that your customers are happy and you're satisfied with the results of your, what you provide them so I, I truly believe that in the retail business that if somebody goes into a particular business and you, uh, you know uses the services of that particular business if they have a good experience they're going to talk about it or if they have a bad experience they're going to talk about it and you know and unfortunately that's you know that's that's the give and take that you have to worry about but if you do like you said provide great customer service then those good comments are going to come to the forefront yeah the beauty of having this mom man nut free company business is that you get to uh, meet a lot of people especially during the months of may june july and august when everybody's on vacation and they come from out of state and they've come and visit old Colorado City and they happen to stop by the store and they they share their experiences with you and, and uh, to be quite honest I ran into a gentleman that I was uh, stationed with in the military in 1975 yeah. we were just talking about odd things and I saw his ID card and uh, so we just happened to mention a couple of assignments and he says yeah I was there and, I, and we happened to be in the same squadron and yeah. it was kind of a really a great experience so you know we, we stay in touch with each other as well and uh, just, just to make mention you know, we have a, a thing called Military Mondays. So if anybody in the military comes visit uh, shops in our store, you know, we give a 10 percent discount uh, on, on Mondays. So um, if there's any military people listening, you know, stop by our store and uh, take advantage of that uh, d- at the uh, discount. So so you walk out with either 10 percent more money or 10 percent more candy. You can't lose that way. <laughs> <laughs> a little less in economics there, folks. <laughs> it's amazing how your brain works. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm amazed it works. That is. <laughs> Absolutely. So. Okay. Okay, so in summary, you've been affiliated with uh, sports, you've been affiliated in the military, you've been affiliated now with Mountain Man Nut and Fruit Company, you've already planned for your legacy. I mean, can you sum up anything else that, <laughs> that you have in store for us? Uh, no, I, you know, again, it, it's a lot of work, a lot of time. Uh, you don't get much sleep, but, uh, you know, it's it's been a great journey. And uh, like I said, I've been blessed uh, with all the opportunities given to me. And it's not that I'm a very smart guy. I'm, I'm not, I'm really not a smart person, but uh, uh, opportunities were there. We just took advantage of it and we've made it successful. You know, and, and I think if people want to get into a business, uh, you know, you got to go with what's coming in from your heart, and that's how I. Boom. Yeah, you got to have a passion for it, and, and it sounds like even though you may not have ever thought about it before, uh, when you took on that responsibility, you had the passion to make it successful. Well, I was a pretty good project manager when I got out of the Air Force, and but I saw an opportunity to form another company, and you know it's Rocky Mountain Sports Officials. Right. And, you know, again, we've been in business for 26 years and been very successful, and uh, another opportunity came up with Mountain Man, so we took advantage of that, and we've been very successful there as well and uh you know it's a matter of luck a matter of hard work and it's a matter of an opportunity that came forward and we just took advantage of it i mean you don't have to be really smart i mean I, that's how i look at it because i am not a smart guy when it comes to retail and you know i'm not well you didn't have a background and i I'm not, i don't necessarily think that you should uh, um you know, label yourself as not being smart. It just may be that you didn't have the experience, the you know, in in the background. So. That's correct. Yeah, absolutely. But at one point, all of us knew nothing. So you just have to figure out what you want to learn, pick it up, basic principles. 
Absolutely. Not bad at all. Yeah. Bob Lancey, right. thank you very much for being here on Profiles of Success. It was a great show, and we really appreciate you sharing your life story with us. No, thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate that. So we hope you've inspired you to understand the lessons Bob learned, that you don't always have to be the expert in it. You don't have to have the MBA. You don't have to have the criteria, the family backing. You have to have a desire to do what you love, find out a way to turn it into business, and make it sustainable so you get paid for it. And you do that by watching YouTube videos, going to your score office, the SBDC, your local library, so many free sources out there. All you have to do is take the initiative to make that happen. And when you wake up every single day, whether you feel like it or not, you have to make absolutely sure that you do something or anything to make sure that you keep moving Moving forward. forward. You've been listening to Profiles of Success on Success Radio USA with Chuck Bader and Jerry Evans, brought to you in part by the 365 Grand Club, Colorado Springs' only elite urban downtown club. So start enjoying the benefits of downtown with ease and prestige. Get your club card today at 365grandclub.com. That's 365grandclub.com. God bless you all and see you next week on Profiles of Success. Thank you for listening to the IB Network at IBNetwork.us. Produced by and for the Internet Broadcasting Network can be found on TuneIn. Be sure to take us with you by using the TuneIn app on all your mobile devices. This is the IV Network.